Good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. We thank you so much for joining us. President Paul Bia has urged the African Union to assist Cameroon in the fight against terrorism, citing the situation in the far north region of Cameroon and the two Anglophone regions of the country. He equally expressed his wish to see the displaced people in the northwest and the southwest and those in the refugee camps to return to their respective localities. The African Union chairperson, that is Faki Musa Mahamat, that was received in audience at the Unity Palace today equally said on his part that no conflict can be resolved through violence. Let's have the details in the following report. A toast of friendship between President Pobi and Musa Faki Mohamed, chairperson of the African Union Commission, as his official visit to Cameroon enters day two. The African Union chairperson is coming to Cameroon at the time when the country is preparing to hold its presidential election. Musa Faki Mahamat has assured President Paul Bian, the Cameroonian population, that his institution is going to be dispatching a team of election observers when Cameroonians go to the polls. Je voudrais vous rassurer du meilleur accompagnement possible des élections prévues en octobre prochain. Cet accompagnement se traduira entre autres par l'envoi d'une importante mission. The African Union's chair reaffirmed the institution's support to Cameroon in the preservation of peace, security and territorial integrity. Sur les événements qui se sont déroulés, qui se déroulent dans les régions du nord-ouest et du sud-ouest du Cameroun, mais sont particulièrement instructifs. Je voudrais à cette occasion réitérer le ferme attachement de l'Union africaine à l'unité, l'intégrité territoriale, La stabilité politique et sociale. This he added that a concrete manifestation of his solidarity and compassion to the people of the Northwest and the Southwest regions afflicted by socio-political crisis will be seen in the coming days. Dès mon retour au siège, je ferai prendre les mesures idoines pour que cette solidarité et compassion se traduisent dans les faits. À travers une initiative pertinente. He added that war can never be a solution in a crisis situation and urged Cameroon, like other African nations hit by unrest, to embrace dialogue. Aucun différent en Afrique ne saurait être résolu par la violence. Seule la concertation. President Paul Bia, in his welcome speech, invited African Union members to mobilize efforts in the fight against terrorism, which to him is a threat to the continent and Cameroon, citing the crisis in the Anglophone regions. Notre principale préoccupation demeure, bien entendu, le rétablissement de la paix dans les zones concernées et le retour à une situation normale. President Paul Bia also expressed the need for displaced persons and refugees to return to their respective localities. Ce qui permettra aux populations de retrouver leurs occupations et aux réfugiés et déplacés de rentrer chez eux. The head of state also underscored the need for continental integration to be strengthened. And the President of the Republic of Cameroon that has announced that he would stand as CPDM presidential candidate for the October 7, 2018 presidential election in Cameroon. The President made the announcement on his official Twitter account and the head of state indicated that he accepts the people's call to stand as candidate for the seventh time for a more united, stable and prosperous Cameroon. Sumanji Khan Gabriel tells us more. It was via his Twitter account that Paul Bia, President of the Republic, officially declared that he will be present at the presidential elections come October 7, 2018. According to the President of the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement on his Twitter page, Dear compatriots in Cameroon and the diaspora, aware of the challenges we must take up together to ensure a more united, stable and prosperous Cameroon, I am willing to respond positively to your overwhelming calls. I will stand as your candidate in the upcoming presidential elections.
His announcements officially indicate that he will be seeking for another seven years in office since November 1982 and elected in 1984. It should be recalled that before now, Paul Beer has been re-elected in 1988, 1992, 1997, 2004 and 2011. It is, however, the first time that the President of the Republic is making his intentions known via the social media. Is he going to do that when campaigns also start on September 24th, 2018? That is Martin Gebru there talking about the President of the Republic announcing his candidature that he's going to be running as president of the Republic of the country. Here in the country's economic capital, Douala, it should be noted that some opposition party leaders have said that the candidature of President Pobia could be legitimate but simply unacceptable. They told us that it is time for the head of state to retire after serving as the head of state for more than three and a half decades. But CPDM's party supporters have described him as their natural candidate. They said that he has been able to achieve a lot economically, socially and politically, and that there is still a lot to achieve by the President of the Republic. Details in this report. Among supporters of the CPDM and within the circles of the opposition in Cameroon, reactions are different following the announcement of President Paul Bia's candidature. The Social Democratic Front Party was not surprised that 85-year-old President Paul Bia has sought re-election, but the supporters of the principal opposition party in the country, retirement for the head of state, is a right. I don't see what an 85-year-old person should still be doing at that level. He has been in the high circles of governance since 1962. So it is but normal. He, I think retirement is his right. Rest is his right. The legal advice of the Social Democratic Front for the painted what he called negative balance sheet of the regimes over three and a half decades of stewardship. The account of his stewardship. I mean, we've gone from a country which was peaceful in 1982 to a country which is now in pieces in 2018. All this under his reign. We've gone from an economy which uh, was uh, considered as uh, uh, developing in 1982 to an economy which is poor and indebted under his reign. All this comes to show that his stewardship has not been good for Kamal. To the opposition, change of power is the solution and that can only be done through the ballot box. It is for Cameroonians to decide and uh, I think we have every reason, we have all the options. So come October the 7th, Cameroonians are called upon to decide what they think is good for them. I for one, I don't see any reason why an 85-year-old man should be voted at that position. Ça se fait un vendredi, le week-end va commencer. C'est une très bonne nouvelle. Nous rentrons dans une période de clarification totale même. But CPD and party supporters have described President Paul Bia as an incarnation of peace and national unity in Cameroon. Il nous faut un homme qui nous conduise en toute protection et sécurité dans cette période pour qu'on prépare l'avenir. To Evie Emmanuel Com, the preservation of peace in the country at this point is more important than the balance sheet of the CPD and natural candidate. La question sécuritaire au Cameroun, la question de l'unité du Cameroun, de la paix, de la solidarité, de la forme de l'État. CPDM supporters have hailed Paul Bia as a leader who succeeded to foster democracy and development at the national and continental levels. We know what the president is doing to Cameroon. Many people may not see it. We are still a developing country. A lot is being done. A lot is being done. And I think what the president is doing, compared to other countries, we still need him. We still need him to maintain the way in which he has been piloting the state of affairs in Cameroon. We still need him to be there because the way the country is being transformed, we can be sure that by 2035 or before even, Cameroon will be a, a different place. Cameroon will be a paradise. So 36 years in power, yes, accomplished, yes, but still we are a developing country. So he's fighting for us to get there. Why not give him the chance? The much-awaited CPD and presidential candidate is now known as party heads and sympathizers brace for the October 7th political rendezvous. The SDF say that they are not intimidated. They are leaving no stone unturned. So we've been mobilizing and uh, in the days ahead, his candidature will be deposited at Elecam and uh, preparing for campaigns and we count we must work as one people in our country to make sure that 
we have a better leadership, a better governance, and start working for the better men of this country. Campaigns ahead of the election begin on the 24th of September, 2018. And just to note that Elecam board members met today in the nation's capital, Yaoundé, and the president of the board of directors of the election's governing body, Eno Abrams Egbe, indicated that the candidacy or the files of the president of the republic, that is Paul Bia, would be uh, filed at the elections Cameroon that was supposed to be at 3 p.m. this afternoon. We now come here to the country's economic capital, Dwala, the Minister of Territory Administration, Paula Tanganji, that has announced that uh, the start of the humanitarian action plan of displaced persons in the northwest and the southwest regions of Cameroon uh, begins today. He was speaking during a press conference in the city of Dwala today. Innocent Aze tells us more in this report. The government's emergency humanitarian assistance plan meant for displaced and affected English-speaking Cameroonians has effectively started Friday, says Territorial Administration Minister Paul Atanganji as he visited Douala. The head of state has given instructions that the plan of action must start this week and that is why we are starting this week. Then secondly, this is the main uh, center of distribution. In the regions, the northwest and southwest, you have other smaller centers where you have to do distribution. So when they, they don't have materials, they can come here. His arrival in Douala was to reveal to the population the stock of humanitarian items collected and stored so far. We, we came here this morning for you to see the items related to the emergency humanitarian plan put in place by the head of state in favor of displaced persons and refugees in the northwest and southwest regions. And everything has been taken into consideration. You can see food items, you can see uh, sanitation, you can see agriculture and reconstruction. Those are the main priorities on the field. The stock comprises mattresses, foodstuff and construction materials destined for the displaced and destroyed homes and public structures. Agricultural tools were also among the humanitarian materials to enable the affected population resume their agricultural activity. A humanitarian organization, OCHAD, has been assisting the initiative. OCHAD is uh, the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in Cameroon. We have already shifted uh, 30 tons of what we call non-food items, uh, composed of soaps, blankets, and mattresses. Distribution is going on uh, in Manfe and Kumba. It's done to, through the diocese of uh, Manfe and uh, Kumba. Minister Paula Tanganji, president of the Ad Hoc Interministerial Committee, in charge with the implementation of the government's emergency humanitarian assistance plan in the Anglophone regions, was welcomed by top administrative authorities in Douala. Exchanges were made during the enchantment, which began with a press conference. We take you to Limbe, southwest region of Cameroon, to talk about the Limbe city or Limbe that finally has designated a paramount chief. 13 years after the passing away of the chief of Chief Ferguson Manga William, John Manga Williams has been designated amidst a cloudy atmosphere and innocent as a, or rather, Davison Maimo, a correspondent in Limbe, in the following report, is going to be taking a look at the infighting within the chiefdom. His report. Since the demise of the paramount ruler of Victoria, Limbe, Chief Ferguson Manga William, Victoria Limbe has been for 13 years without a paramount chief at the detriment of the people, especially the indigenous people of Limbe, Bakwiri. With several claims to the throne, from King Eliwoto, paramount ruler of the Bomuku clan, claiming the throne rightfully belongs to him, saying Limbe is part of the Bomuku clan, to the Wovia's people, who at one time says it is their turn to rule Limbe, claiming the throne is rotatory within some villages in Limbe. The Kar and the Mukebas, who are of the royal tree, have also claimed at one time that the Manga Williams should hand off the throne, that it belongs to them. Not leaving out the late brother of the deceased paramount chief, Jesco Manga Williams, whom before his demise equally claimed that he was the rightful person to ascend the paramount throne of Limbe. The misunderstanding and the chieftain's squabble of the paramount stool of Limbe consequently pushed Limbe to be without a paramount ruler for 13 years. 
the designation of John Manga William to ascend the throne after the failure of two consultative talk has come to lead to rest the Limbe Paramount Chieftains' squabble despite a cloudy atmosphere. It's true that he has been vacant for 13 years. It's true that there have been some squabbles. I would rather call them misunderstandings. I will thank God that uh, there's been some harmony. We work together with every other family and within our family and without. And we came up with a popular choice, which was me, as confirmed yesterday. Even though there are speculations, as usual, when it comes to chieftaincy issue in FACO division of a possible petition, everything being equal, John Manga Williams awaits his ministerial order in the months ahead and official installation as paramount chief of Victoria Limbe. And we talk about plum business in Lumo of the Mongo division of Cameroon, an activity which many are engaged in, but the turnover has been very slow. Of late, many are attributing the situation to the current crisis in the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon farmers say that customers from the northwest and the southwest regions of Cameroon are no longer coming as a result of the unrest. Details with Fomi Armstrong Sander. We are in Lum. Precisely in Vonkem of the Mongo Division, Lithua region of Cameroon, it is practically difficult for one to move a step without seeing a considerable quantity of plums stockpiled in bags or being roasted. The price of these plums has dropped drastically this holiday period and consumers are making a feast out of the cheap plums. While consumers rejoice, Plum retailers and wholesalers blame the anglophone crisis for the bad business. The prints and done pass it anyway. It's difficult the commerce because of the crisis anglophone. So to be strong, to parle by the côté sud-ouest, ni le côté nord-ouest. Plum business is not the best this year. Business is difficult because of the anglophone crisis. Because we can't go to the northwest and southwest region, we can only manage between Douala and Yaoundé. The Anglophone crisis has deprived them of a large market in the northwest and southwest regions. Buyers are becoming scarce. La zone du sud-ouest, on en avait beaucoup des acheteurs qui venaient aussi diminuer la la quantité de plumes que vous trouvez sur le marché, mais personne ne vient. We used to have so many customers coming from the southwest region, but now nobody comes any longer. Consequently. Buyers fix the price and farmers are obliged to accept. Il y a moins d'acheteurs et chacun fait son prix et le planteur est libre et est obligé de prendre ce qu'on lui propose. Those who sell roasted plum and plantain at the Carrefour Tumble in Loom are also complaining of bad business. The once booming business with travelers at this road junction is a shadow of itself as insecurity persists. Plum traders in Loom say. Only the return of peace in the Anglophone regions can revamp the dying plum business. And that uh, brings us to the end of this first segment of the news. We are going to be taking you to Russia in just a few seconds from now. The finals of the ongoing FIFA World Cup taking place in Russia will be taking place on Sunday, but the battle for the third place continues. Manji and Gabriel joins us in just a few seconds from now. We shall be right back. It is sports time in this edition of the news, and Smanji Kangebre is already here with us. Matt, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, uh, Mimi, and uh, the televiewers this evening. And maybe is uh, the last bit one time they will be seeing me on air. Sure. Yeah, after the finals and Ted. It's tomorrow. been a wonderful journey so far. Very, very wonderful, and it was a great one too. Sure. Uh, tomorrow, the battle for the third place. It's going to be between Belgium and England ahead of the finals of the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia. It is the battle for the bronze medal of the competition.
action that will be played tomorrow out there in Russia is going to be a battle between the Red Devils of Belgium against the Three Lions of uh, England. And going by our table that we made in terms of the competition this far, we have Belgium that has scored a total number of 14 goals against 12 for England, 6 considered just like England, 36 shots on goal and 20 for England and 88 fouls committed for 67 for England. Now, to know that before this confrontation between the Red Devils and that of England they have already met in the court of the group stages of the competition and it was England that overpowered their opponents of the day that is Belgium by one goal to zero so many people are asking the question if tomorrow Hurricane is going to increase his goal tally because till now Hurricane still remains the top goal scorer so meaning every being everything being equal if uh, Lukaku doesn't score at least three goals tomorrow, Harry Kane will back home the Golden Boot Award for the top goal scorer of the competition. So it's going to be a tough game. And worthy of note, uh, Mimi, is the fact that these two teams, most of the players in the two countries, they know themselves so well because a majority of the Belgian players play their trade in England. So the English players know those who are playing with Belgium so well. So that will be another area that the match will be played. And talking about the coach of um, uh, Belgium, we have, uh, he is called um, Roberto. Uh, we, we, he, he is somebody who actually managed everton before being uh, taken for uh, the belgium's job so he knows the world so well they call him roberto martinez he's the guy who is managing the belgian team he has once coached with everton in england and coached with other teams so he knows the mentality of english football so it's going to be a tough battle between the red devils and the three lions and of it, england. A, a tough battle of course that uh, the world's football governing body has so far named the referees for the third place already. Yes, the referees for the third place, they are very clear. The referees that they, uh, they gave us, all three, or let me say the first two referees as a uh, main referee, assistant number one, assistant number two, all of them are coming from Iran. And we have the fourth assistant referee who is coming from Senegal. He is Malan Diehu, who is coming from Senegal. And the main referee of the game is going to be Ali Reza, Ali Reza Agni of Iran, he will be the one to handle the game, but his first and second assistant will be from Iran too, so those are the referees that FIFA has named to handle the third place bronze match of the World Cup in Russia. And, pre and preview of the final game that is the much awaited game of the competition, France and Croatia. Yes, France and Croatia, they had a wonderful competition and I must say that France, uh, till they arrived at the level of the finals, no team defeated them. Head to head, all international matches brought together. France, they have won three against zero for Croatia and two draws. France have scored nine goals against Croatia and three goals uh, for uh, Croatia. So looking at, at the figures, it will already tell us that on paper, France has an upper hand, but there's one good thing with the Croatian national football team. They have that spirit of never say die until the game is finished. That is what has actually taken the Croatian football team right up to the finals. Remember, they came from uh, in three subsequent knockout stages. They only bounced back after we had the matches that were taken to extra time and they bounced back to penalty or final game. So, Croatia, they have that attitude of never say die and that will be what France DJ Deschamps should be watching at because the Croatian national team, they have that spirit a very determined spirit to go. Though France is, is, is uh, overpowering them on paper, maybe the finals is on the and this And this finals, of course, is almost a rematch of semi-finals some 20 years ago. 20 years ago, when France hosted the competition, they defeated Croatia two goals to one. That was at the level of the semi-finals of France 1998. And France went ahead to become champions of that year. This time around, and the same year, Croatia finished third or in the competition hosted by France. Mm -hmm. This time, they are still meeting again. So France will be tr struggling to, you know, keep their uh, d d keep their supremacy on Croatia. While Croatia will be thinking about that defeat some 20 years ago for them to see how they can uh, pay back the coins as it's supposed to be. And who are some of these key players for France and those holding the record? as far as the competition is concerned, ahead of the match on Sunday? Yeah, we have the likes of Mbappé, we have the likes of uh, Giroud, but there is one key person 
that France will be looking up to, they call him Antoine Griezmann. Antoine Griezmann is one of those key players that has actually made France uh, so, so wonderful. And just to know that Antoine Griezmann, if we have to look at his record, he has scored just uh, two goals or so. He has the most assists of the World Cup and he has the most shots on accuracy in the World Cup this far and pass accuracy to, uh, of the World Cup this far. So he, be, he will be the key player that uh, many players of uh, Croatia will be looking up to because he's one of the top guys that people will be expecting to produce what many people need and on the other side we have uh, some cases of injuries on the side of croatia yes before we go to the cases of injury we have one guy they call him ivan rakitic he will be playing the match against france tomorrow he's one of the most dreaded midfielders we have this far in the world he is going to enter that game tomorrow with a record it will be his 71st uh, game competitive game no other player has played 71 matches throughout the season remember he has club matches to play and uh, the country's game to play too he has 71 matches tomorrow so it will be a record no player has ever had 71 matches to play in the competition now talking about those who are injured uh, we have uh, Croatia that will be missing out they might be missing out let me not say they are missing out they might be missing out this key player Ivan Perisic who is uh, on setting for the finals in uh, uh, Moscow on Sunday because of a key injury another player Player that uh, they will be missing is Ivan Strenich, who also have, uh, who is also nursing an injury. So the prayer is that they should get well soon and meet their squad, uh, the team on uh, the pitch that will be on Sunday for the final. Another outstanding player is Deshan that is heading for a record with a win. DJ Deshan, we talked about it. He is somebody who has had some ill lucks in terms of football. He won the 1998 World Cup. And he also won the Euro 2002, but failed to win the Euro 2016. Now he is heading to 2016, uh, to the 2018 World Cup Finals as uh, the third coach who have played and won the World Cup and of course have also taken uh, who will be winning the World Cup. So DJ Deschamps is heading for his stream and just to know that the referee for the finals too we already have his name. He is called uh, Pintana, the referee for the finals, uh, for the um, finals on Sunday. The uh, FIFA uh, Confront, uh, Confederation FIFA has already not named him. He is uh, from Argentina and he is uh, the man who is going to handle the finals between France and Croatia. It should be noted that this referee uh, the, he's not uh, handling the match uh, this game for the first time there was a game France defeated Uruguay he also handled that match so it's like a referee that gives luck to France we hope again that France will have luck behind him and um, we continue to say that ahead of the match that will be coming up there is information circulating that the kits uh, the, the company proceeding the kits for France is already preparing a two-star JC for France, indicating that France has already won the World Cup. And should that happen, Nike, that is producing the kit wear for France, is going to add another star. We hear they're already planning to add another star on the cock, so that on Monday, if France wins the game, they already they have already two stars already yeah, two stars on the official JC of France. Now, to note that one person that will be expecting in the Moscow is French President Emmanuel Macron. He is going to be there, but Emmanuel Macron has decided to give uh, to invite some two players from the French national football team. We have Laurent Koscielny and uh, Dimitri Payet. The French uh, president has invited them, so they will be sitting alongside the press, uh, French president Macron on Sunday in Moscow with other key uh, persons. Now, is he amongst those to carry the trophy? No, no, they are not. The, they FIFA. are not. FIFA has decided to name Philippe Lam. He won the World Cup in 20, uh, that is in 2004, Philip, Philip Lam of uh, the National Mannschaft of Germany. And another great uh, actress, uh, another model, I can say celebrity, he is called uh, Naram. We have to see, we see those pictures that uh, we'll be showing you that the carriers of the World Cup, we have Philip Lam. Philip Lam won the co competition in 2014 with Germany. And the model, Nata Supernova, who will be also part of taking the official official World Cup trophy inside the cage that is produced by Vuitton uh, to the center of the pitch on Sunday. So these are the two persons who will be carrying that trophy to the center of the pitch on Sunday. And finally, Cameroon, Cameroon is involved. Not, 
take part in the World Cup finals yes. or competition, but Fika Food is going to be represented. The president is there. Gianni Infantino has given an, inf an official inv invitation to uh, Barista Jodune Happy, who is the president of the Normalization Committee. He will be the one to represent uh, the federation at the finals on Sunday. So he will be traveling to Moscow, Russia, to witness the finals of the World Cup on Sunday. So he has an official invitation from Gianni Infantino, who is the president of FIFA. Now, finally, or maybe second to the last thing that we have to discuss, it sure. is official. FIFA has already made the date known for the 20, uh, 2022 22. World Cup that will be hosted in Qatar. Now, Mimi, just to know that it is the first time that FIFA will be hosting this World Cup, not in the period of June and July, as we are having it now in Russia, but FIFA has announced that the World Cup in Qatar 2022 will be from the 21st of November to the 18th of December. It is the first time. 2022. So it is the first time. Is there any particular reason for that innovation? Well, uh, certainly it is uh, due to the climate okay. change it is a climate and fifa wants to do it in such a way that many the countries that will qualify will not have uh, problems with the climate because uh, qatar is different from russia and all of that so they are struggling to make everything comfortable for the team so it is the first time fifa will be playing the world cup out of the month of june and july so in 2022 21st of november to 18th of december that is when uh, the world cup will take place in and finally Qatar. before we go smart we, we have a home a game tomorrow we are just inviting the many supporters that we have out there in yaoundé sure. we have our junior lions that will be playing tomorrow it is an eliminatory match for the under 20 nations cup uh, africa uh, niger will be hosting that competition in 2019 cameroon under 20 national football team will take on mali tomorrow at the akmadu Aijos stadium time is 3 30 p.m nobody should miss thank you so much Sumanji and gabriel it's always wonderful having you see you on monday monday for the last edition thank you so much to our viewers it was equally a pleasure having with us in this edition of the prime time newscast on equinox television wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs until we meet again goodbye